Thank you, Quorum. Um, we have a public comment period, but no one has signed up this evening, so we will move ahead to the items on the consent calendar. Um, if you have anything you want to pull, raise your hand. I'm going to go ahead and start running through all these and just uh, throw your hand up, and hopefully Miss Margaret will ch or catch it, and I'll, I'll catch it, and we'll get it pulled off. So first and second items are not on consent item number three 2023 2313 roten and welsh approves a grant from the tennessee state of tennessee administrative office of the courts to the metropolitan government for the provisions of interpretation translation services for court hearings involving individuals of limited english proficiency in davis county trial court 2023-2314 roten syracuse approves an inter local agreement between the emergency communications district for national and the metropolitan government for the provision of services and reimbursement of calls pertaining to enhanced 911 services 2023-2315 hager and roten authorized the metropolitan Development and Housing Agency to enter into a pilot agreement and accept payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes in respect to a faulty and with respect to a multifamily housing project located 910 Robinson Road, known as Robinson Road Apartments, 2023-2316. Roten and Allen authorizes a grant not to exceed, not exceeding two million from the Barnes Fund for affordable housing to living developments concepts for the express purpose of constructing and rehabilitating affordable housing. 2023-2317. Roten and Druffle appropriates grant funds from the. Craig Foundation for the Multi Council Multi Multipolitan Action Commission, sorry, General Operating Support. Uh, 2023 2318 Henderson Roten Hurt and Welsh accepts an in kind grant from the Friends of Warner Parks to the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recre Recreation to provide funding for the next phase of improvements in Warner Parks. 2023-2319, Roten, Hurt, and Welsh accepts an in-kind grant from Creative Parks Nashville to the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation to provide equipment for the support and expansion of the music and visual arts programs at the Centennial Performing Arts Center and Metro Parks Community Centers. 2023-2320, Roten, Welsh, Hurt, and Allen accepts an in-kind grant from the National Food Project to the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation for a series of infrastructure projects at Mill Ridge Park, including a pole barn, apiary installation, apiary installation, water catchment station, community garden plots, and other site improvements. 2023-2321, Taylor Roten and Hurt accepts an in-kind grant from Vanderbilt University to the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation to replace the current video board at the Centennial Sportsplex. Oh, sorry, uh, that one is not on consent. Twenty twenty-three, twenty-three, twenty-four, Sledge Roten, Pulley and Welch. Uh, accepts donations totaling one million seventy four thousand from property owners and developers as contribute contributions toward construction of multimodal transportation imp improvements in the wedgwood houston and chestnut hill neighborhoods 2023 23 25 wrote and pulley approves a license and maintenance agreement between the metropolitan department of water and sewage service and the national downtown partnership for installation and maintenance of storm drain filters in the downtown area um bills on second reading got 2023 1894 approves uh, Lee Roten Withers in Syracuse approves and authorizes Director of Public Property Administration to accept a donation of real property consisting of 5.08 acres located at Zero Carruthers Road for a site of a new fire station. 2020, nope, moving on. Yep, 2023-2011, Roten and Withers approves a lease agreement between the Metropolitan Government and Donaldson Corporate Center LP for office space at 3055 Lebanon Road. 2023-2012, Roten, Sledge, Roten, Withers, and Hurt approves three agreements relating to the acquisition of a parcel of property and improvements located at 607 Bass Street. 2023-2013, Henderson, Roten, Withers, and Hurt approves and authorizes the Director of Public Property Administration to accept a donation of real property consisting of approximately 0.53 acres located at 7166 Highway 100 to increase park land for Edwin Warner Park. 2023-2014, Henderson, Roten, Withers, and Hurt approves and authorizes the Director of Public Property Administration to accept a donation of real property consisting of approximately 7.81 acres located at 7156 Highway 100 to increase parkland for Edwin Warner Park. 
2023-2015 Henderson Road and Withers and others, approves and authorizes the Director of Public Property Administration to accept a donation of real property consisting of approximately 13.18 acres located at 6949 Highway 70 South to increase park land for conservation of open space and local flora and fauna. 2023-2016 Road and Hurt and Welsh approves the First Amendment to an agreement between the Metropolitan Government and Nashville Steam Preservation Society for the lease and restoration of Steve Locomotive Number 576. And last item, 2023-2017 um, Withers wrote and Hurt approves an agreement between the Metropolitan Government and Tennessee Golf Foundation concerning the renovation of two golf courses in Shelby Park. Uh, that is the consent calendar. Council Member Swar, you recognized. Thank you, Chair. Uh, can you take out BL 2023-2011 and 2012, please? Items 19 and 20. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman Hurt says 2017. Yes, yes please. Uh huh. <clears throat> Seeing no other hands, I get a motion. Move, move properly second on the consent calendar. All in favor? Any opposed? You approve. Ten in favor, zero against. Who you got? Eleven in favor, zero against. Back to item number one on the calendar. Um, we had a nice discussion about this last, last time. 2023, 22, 92, 2292 Roten and Withers approves an intergovernmental license agreement between the Metropolitan Government and the United States Department of Defense to enter certain property located at 1414 County Hospital Road owned by the Metropolitan Government for limited military training purposes. Moved, properly seconded. Um, I guess I'm going to call on someone from the administration to tell us kind of where we are on this. Military training. Yeah. You're recognized. All right, we're going to do a combined answer. So these are... Um, military exercises, they will not be using live am ammunition or live oh, explosives. Oh, if you can hold on just one second. Certainly, I'm Councilman sorry. Pledge, I want you I'm to listen sorry. because you cared about this last week, and so I, I just want to make sure you hear it. Yep. So it'll be a simulated um, sort of bomb retrie retrieval, but they're not using live explosives. Councilmember Schlage, you recognized. That's all I know. Thank you. I remember from the previous discussion which I was filling Councilmember Johnston in on was that the, there was a main concern about sort of aerial um, operations. Could you go into a little bit into that? I don't know that I have the answer. I know there have been some correspondence between the council lady that I have not seen. So um, I don't know if anyone else has seen the correspondence or if the council lady Johnston wants to. I didn't see the emails that were sent. Oh, no, I was just saying I was to her on that. I was. She doesn't know anything. I was filling her in. That's her words. Um, no, I was just saying more about. So when we were talking last committee meeting, we were talking about how several of us in our districts had experienced as part of these operations, sort of very low flying aerial operations. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. I know, I know Mr. Jameson sent us some emails about it, but I wanted to just get some clarification. Does this include- And is the concern drones or is the concern helicopters? Helicopters. helicopters. Okay, yeah. just uh -huh. to clarify. Yeah. Uh, do we have the answer to this? Let me find out the answer to that about drones and helicopters. Oh, and just, okay, so the email says no helicopters, so okay. so I guess we can say no. The other concern I, I had on this drones. was the timing of it, um, and I don't know if anybody else shares that concern, it's just, it's on a pretty sensitive date, and I just wanted to make sure if people are gonna get notice on this to know what's going on, if that makes sense. So it is on September 11th, yes. right? So. Um, 
I think we'd be happy to work with council members in the affected area to do any sort of public information that to dispel any concerns. I mean, gotcha. as the affected area on this particular occasion is not in the district I represent, I would defer to, to, those, to that district council member. I just wanted to highlight that because it, it did strike me as a little, um, as, as it could, if people didn't have correct notice, it could cause some additional concern. Chair. You're recognized. I'll just add, I did talk to council member Hall months ago when this first, before it was filed, and he was aware and said he would make sure that his constituents knew that this was coming up, they had the date, what it was. So they've had plenty of notice. Gotcha. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Van Rees, you're recognized. Public information. Did you, I'm sorry, I thought you raised your hand. Councilmember Swore, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to add to that, that I think that I would ask the administration to make sure that the notice go out to the people in the area, because I think that was one of the primary concern. And then when I was reading the fiscal notes, I did see where it talks about liability, not just with Metro, but also with third parties in the area. Uh, and I think with Metro, it says Metro have to report within five days. Uh, but I think with the individuals, as part of the notice to them, they should also know that they have uh, the recourse if something should happen, that they can actually file for liability as third party to that training. So I think it's important to let the people in the area be aware of all of those uh, as we put the information out. Thank you, Council Member Sora. Seeing no other hands, was there anything that anybody needed to know before tomorrow night? I just want to make sure. I'll ask about drones. Okay, so we're gonna have someone ask about drones for us and then see if there's any issues before tomorrow night. So seeing no other hands, all in favor? Any opposed? Do you approve? 11 in favor, zero against. Sorry. 2023-2295, Roten, Syracuse, and Hurt approves a grant contract between the Metropolitan Board of Health and Why We Can't Wait, Inc. for the provision of violence interruption services. Uh, we have a proposed substitute by Council Member Toombs. Can I get a motion on the or on the resolution? Move properly seconded. Council Member Toombs, you are recognized on the proposed substitute. Thank you, um, Chair. Actually, the last meeting I'd asked for a deferral because I wanted to have a, a meeting with a few department heads, and the earliest date that I was able to get was July 28th. So I would like to move for a one meeting deferral. Move for move one meeting deferral, properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? You approve. 12 in favor, zero against for a one meeting deferral. Uh, 2023 23 21 Taylor wrote and heard accepts an in-kind grant from Vanderbilt University to the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation to replace the current video board at the Centennial Sportsplex. I normally would have this on consent, but it's not. So I don't know if someone wanted to discuss this. So Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Thank you. I received a letter from the Parks Director indicating that we were withdrawing it. Okay. You're, so so you I move for a withdrawal. And since I'm on it, I will move for the withdrawal. Any opposed? No opposition. 12 in favor, zero against for a withdrawal. Thank you, Council Member Hurt. Twenty twenty three, twenty three, twenty two. Allen O'Connell wrote and Pulley and others approves an intergovernment agreement between the Metropolitan Government and the Electric Power Board relating to the installation, maintenance, and operation of street lights on public rights of way, and the conversion of street lights to use LED fixtures. You got a motion properly seconded. Council Member Allen, you are recognized. Thank you. I will I will turn this over to Kendra, who can give a lot more details. But essentially, we have been working with NES for many years to, to do our street lights without a real grip on how many there are, how much energy they use, and, and it's been a flat cost. So this is a, 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 a long-awaited conversion to LED, which is much more efficient, has the potential to be dark skies compliant, and theoretically will save a whole lot of energy and hopefully a lot of money as well. So. Take Kendra, it away, Kendra. Kendra, you're recognized. 
Great, thank you, Councilmember Allen and Chair. Um, this is such an exciting um, improvement in streetlight enhancement for our city. It's going to have really significant um, pedestrian and vehicle safety improvements. Um, we'll see greenhouse gas emissions reductions, um, energy consumption costs will go down as well. Um, and it's really the result of uh, two years of collaborative conversation between NDOT and NES. And so incredibly grateful um, for the hard work that this group has done. Um, concurrent with this LED streetlight retrofit, um, we're also entering into um, a new and updated streetlight contract. And so one of the features of the streetlight well retrofit is going to be installation of a smart photo cell that will significantly enhance um, NES and NDOT's ability to understand when there's a streetlight failure. So currently right now, if there's a streetlight failure, um, a resident uh, needs to report that through the hub. Um, and that means that we're relying upon them to gather information such as uh, cross streets as well as poll numbers to be able to identify where that's happening. Um, the other method that we currently use for identifying those outages are night drives by NDOT and NES. And so with this smart photo cell, again, we'll have that real-time communication of those outages and be able to respond much, much quicker. Um, so again, really grateful um, to present this to you today. Um, I'll also see if my colleagues at NES or NDOT um, have any information they would like to add. Laura and Antonio, I see y'all back there and y'all are, are not raising your hand. Do y'all wanna speak on this or are y'all happy staying where you are? <laughs> see, I made you come up, Laura. I knew I'd do it, so. <laughs> recognize state your name and who you're with please hi i'm laura smith i'm vice president and general counsel at nashville electric service this really has been um a long time coming and we appreciate the partnership between um between nes the mayor's office and ndot we have the nes team here our ceo Teresa burrells applin um our vice president of transmission and distribution vaughn charles our um controller mark weber our manager of I'm sorry, rates and billing, Jay Neal. And um, of course, we're at the ready to answer any questions, but we uh, would echo Kendra's remarks that we believe it's gonna be a great opportunity for the city. Thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. Uh, Councilmember Allen, you're recognized. Thank you. I did one technical question, and I'm, I'm not sure who on the team would answer that one, but just with regard to the, the color of the light, has, has that level of detail been finalized at this point? It has not been finalized up to this point, but we, we will look at the uh, the Kelvin level of the lights we're installing. We, we obviously don't. We want this to be an upgrade. Uh, we don't want to cause problems with the upgrade. So, Right. I would vote for warm if possible. <laughs> that's what we've heard from other council members Great. as well. Okay. Just want to make sure that's, that's being communicated. Thank you. Thank you, Kendra. Thank you, Council Member Allen. Uh, Council Member Johnston, you're next on the list. You're recognized. Thank you. And I'm glad Council Member Allen brought that up um, because I'm going to put my vote in for warm as well. I don't think anybody wants those really bluish colored. That's not that's not good. Um, I do appreciate the the energy and cost savings. I wanted to know what's the timeline? When will we when will our neighborhood start seeing um, these new lights being installed. Does it have we gotten to that level of detail? Kendra, you're right. <laughs> So within um, the uh, streetlight retrofit term sheet, we outline a five-year timeline um, effective from signing of this new contract. Um, so what is going to happen, and NES and NDOT have already been working together on a conversion plan, but those conversions will start happening immediately following um, their asset inventories, essentially, that they're doing um, for their existing um, streetlight poles. And so those will occur by zone. Um, and again, we've outlined a five-year timeline and um, the, uh, the, the target is to do um, about 20% um, of the um, entire county each year. Okay, and so when those new lights come online, they immediately are able to, I, I just reported a street light outage today, so uh, are they immediately able to communicate or do you put, to put them all in and then they all communicate? 
So, um, so once the smart photo cell is installed with the streetlight infrastructure, it then has the ability to communicate and we'll bring that online to a system. Um, the conversion team is taking great care to select that photo cell um, because we wanna make sure um, it is um, a, an effective investment. Um, and then there's also some software that um, is part of that package. Um, and so the smart photo cell installations will occur um, within that first year, um, but we will see our first retrofits actually occur before installation of the photo cell. So it's two different installations. It's the photo cell and then and the light. It is, itself. but starting af after the, we think about the first year, they will go up at the same, at time. The same time. Does okay. that make sense? So it's yeah. a slight delay because we need a little bit more time to select the right photo cell. LED retrofits will start much faster, but then you'll see them catch back up. Perfect, thank so. you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Swore, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it's along the same line as Councilmember Justin, but I just wanted to know in terms of the area that will be done, uh, do we have the level of details? Because we know whenever there's a light outage uh, in the county, some areas see it more than other areas. So are we going to start with them first, or what is the plan in terms of reaching the entire county? Um, so one item that I failed to reference is that NDOT has already prioritized its high injury network and some of those corridors where um, we see significant outages, but also um, uh, recurring um, repeat uh, injuries and, um, and events. And so we've peeled those out for further attention and potential lighting redesign. Um, as far as specific zones and locations, I'll turn to NES and NDOT to speak to pieces Those of that. Those have been decided yet. We, we, we haven't determined the specific zones or how much are in which zones quite yet. That's part of the inventory process. Um, thank you. I just wanted to just put it in there that based on outages and occurrences and the area that are considered high risk or whatever we call them, if we would just, as we're doing the zone, we prioritize those for whatever we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Gamble, Vice Chair Gamble, I'm sorry, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. And I may have, you may have said this and I missed it, administration. Is the electric power board the contract or the vendor that we'll be installing? If not, have we selected the vendor or will that go through the procurement process? So the electric power board is actually um, managing the capital investment and the installation process. They do have the opportunity to outsource portions of that if determined necessary. Okay, so they are the they are the installer of the of correct. The, of the, okay, thank you. Former board member Mendez, you're pacing. Do you have any questions at all? You're recognized. But just uh, on that last comment, um, NES is responsible for putting them in, but they're, I would guess, almost certainly going to have contractors um, do it. Thank you, former board member Mendez. Chair. Former chair, pardon me, don't even don't don't shortchange you there. So I see no other hands. Any other questions? Seeing none. All in favor? Any opposed? You recommend approval, 12 in favor, zero against. Thank you everyone for coming from NES, I appreciate it. Item 15 on the calendar, 2023-2326, wrote and Pulley approves Amendment 1 to a contract between the Metropolitan Government and Waste Management, Inc. of Tennessee for the provision of solid waste collection and collection of carts. Got moved and properly seconded. Do we have any questions on the contract? Council member, <laughs> Council member Allen, this makes me laugh every time because you don't really raise your hand, you just raise your microphone and hold it up. Like, here I go. I <laughs> gets the job done. <laughs> Thank so you, I Council appreciate Allen, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, I had asked Mr. Honeysucker this question earlier, but I, I want it to be on the public record. Um, this gives this gives one company a total of 70 routes, and I just wanted the context of that, of how many is that out of, to be sure that we're not getting out of kilter. And, and I'm comfortable with the answer, but I want everybody else to hear it. Mr. Honeysucker, would you uh, tell us who you are and who you work for and all that 
that good stuff. So. Absolutely. John Honeysucker, Assistant Director of Waste Services, but I work for the Metro Council, just for the record. <laughs> Um, this contract, basically, what, uh, what you're seeing on this uh, particular legislation, they, 70 of the, of the routes that waste management have currently, um, it looks as if they have more, which they do right now. But let me explain it to you. Waste Industries was one of the contractors that we were actually contracting with. Waste management purchased waste, the local branch of Waste Industries. So that's why it looks as if they have more uh, more routes right now. Currently, Waste Pro, Pro and Platform each have about 55 routes per week. Now, Waste Industries has about 14, so that's that's why that that uh, number varies on uh, on the uh, legislation. Thank you, John. Do you have so, anything? so to do the math, they've got 70 out of at, at least 180. So we're not we're not overweighted in any one group, and I think that's important for people to know. Yes, I appreciate I appreciate the diversity. That's important. That's right. Thank you, Council Member. Any other questions? Seeing no other hands, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? You approve 12 in favor, zero against. That's all the resolutions. We're on to bills on second reading, uh, number 18, BL 2023-2005 by Johnston. Apologize. 1990. 17, BL 2023-1992 by Young, amend section 2.24.230 of the Metropolitan Code pertaining to community meetings. Uh, we have a letter to defer by one meeting uh, by Council Member Young. It's Second. Moved properly seconded for a one meeting deferral. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? You approve 12 in favor, zero against for a one meeting deferral. Now on to number 18, 2023-2005 by Johnston amends chapter 3.52 of the Metropolitan Code to require that employees of the Metropolitan Government receive annual salary increases that reflect a cost of living adjustment consistent with the Consumer Price Index for all urban consumers. Council Member Johnston, um, you are, where are you on the board here? There you are. You are recognized. Thank you. Um, so I brought this forth because I thought that um, it, it's unfortunate that we it takes two, three years to go through the cycle to actually realize how things work. <laughs> and um, so it was really apparent this last um, budget season when we were talking about employee salary and COLA and, and all this different stuff. And it was striking to me how arbitrary um, and very, very subjective we were using COLA. When the definition of COLA is cost of living adjustment, and, and the whole purpose of it is to make sure that the money that we are paying people in their salaries and wages actually has the buying power that we intended for it to have. And high inflation reduces your buying power, which is why the federal government created it back in, I think, the 70s or something. Um, and so the federal government has it tied to CPI because it's a, it's a, it's a very straightforward number that comes out every month. Um, we have used it historically. Uh, inflation has been higher, and, and we've said we're not going to give that much. Inflation has been lower. We've given more. And we use it sort of like a slush. And I feel like if we're going to have a pay plan and we want to increase people's pay, increase their pay. Let's. So I, I wanted to. So anyway, I got this email from uh, Mike Jamison saying, well, we can't do this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Metro Legal says, oh, well, you can't demand, you can't force. Uh, uh, future councils to do this. You can't force the Civil Service Commission to do this, whatever. So I'll end up probably um, withdrawing this tomorrow or, or indefinitely deferring however I decide. But I do think it's worth the conversation so that the people that are returning next year to understand what COLA truly is and how it should be implemented. I also want to try to find some way to have, we'll have a resolution to encourage the Civil Service Commission to stick to CPI that is completely objective and is non non-negotiable um, again I can't force that I guess without a without a charter amendment I don't know that we need to go to that but I do also we're, we're paying this million dollars for this fancy schmancy um, uh, study to go into pay plan and all that um, I would like to formally have a resolution to require Cola and how we have done it in the past and and for them to tell us what is the best way to effectuate Cola um, and so that will be coming, but again, I do want to have this conversation on the floor. It will be brief. I'm not going to go <laughs> whatever because I respect everybody. We're 
three more meetings, y'all, but, um, and I get it, but I do think it's a really important conversation for, for this body to have, especially for those moving forward uh, into the next term. So with that, I will, um, what am I gonna do? Uh, two meeting deferral, that's right, thank you. So we have a motion for a two meeting deferral. Uh, properly seconded. Councilmember Mendez, you're recognized on the deferral. On the deferral. Um, <laughs> 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 thank you, Chair. Um, I appreciate uh, the deferral uh, motion <laughs> and will support it um, because I do think it's an important conversation and in addition to the important stuff that uh, Councilmember Johnson said, I would uh, remind, submit to everybody that um, the reason why it's been squishy over 10 to 15 years has been because of not having a properly funded government at different times of it. Um, and um, and that ought to be part of the conversation to um, getting regularity to adjusting the property tax rate. And so for that reason, I support the deferral. We have a motion and a, a second and a third on the deferral. Seeing no other hands, all in favor? You, uh, any opposed, sorry. You approve, 12 in favor, zero against for a two meeting deferral. Mm. On to items that were pulled off consent, 2023-2011. Roten and Withers approves a lease agreement between the Metropolitan Government and Donaldson Corporate Center LP for office space at 3055 Lebanon Road. Both that pulled it off, I think. And have a motion properly seconded. Councilmember Suara, you are recognized. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just pulled this so I can make a, a shameless plug. Uh, about the fact that we have a lot of uh, properties that are metro properties that we're not using. And I specifically want to talk about the Morris Building. Uh, when you add up the rent that this property is going to cost us, when I added it up, it's about $9 million. Uh, and it's only about 30,000 uh, square footage. We have a property that is uh, 69,000 square footage that we're not using this so some other metro properties that we also have that we're not using. And so I think it's important for us to take a good look at all our assets and see how we need to be using our building and reduce all these rent costs that we have. So when I saw the 9 million, I thought it's worth mentioning uh, for the sake of the viewing audience. And so that we also should know that this is something we need to do. So I wanted to put a plug in for Morris building and all the metro buildings that need fixing and usage so that we can stop renting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just realized looking at the address that I used to represent this person in a legal capacity and that used to be my former uh, law office and so I need to uh, abstain on this. Uh, and then Council Member Mendez just told me he needs to abstain as well because he's probably done the same at some point in the past. So Vice Chair Gamble, if you would uh, kind of run the rest of this bill and I'm coming off of it, so thank you. Oh, sorry. Vice Chair, you recognize. Thank you, I will do. So we are on BL 2023-2011. Roten Withers approves a lease agreement between the Metropolitan Government and Donaldson Corporate Center LP for office space at 3055 Lebanon Road. I have a motion. Yeah, we have a motion in the proper second. second so thank you're, you. You're um, uh, we move for approval. <laughs> oh, oh, discussion. They've already had it. Oh, we already had it. Okay. Move for approval. All in favor? Any opposed? Good Thank abstention. you. Thank you. No abstentions. And oh, two abstentions. Thank yeah, you. Sorry. Yeah, two abstentions. Councilmember Roten and Councilmember Mendez. 2023-2012, Sledge, Roten, Withers, and Hurt approves three agreements relating to the acquisition of a parcel of property and improvements located at 607 Bass Street. Uh, we have a letter to approve from Council Member Sledge. Um, Council Member Swara, you are recognized. Thank you. I have a couple of questions for the administration. Uh, I'm not a real estate person, uh, but all everything that I'm asking is based on the fiscal analysis that I went through. 
Um, and so there's a couple of things that I see and I want to make sure that my understanding is, is correct. Um, the first thing it says that the uh, purchase price is less than the appraisal. Uh, but when you look at the fiscal analysis, I know we're using the assessor of property, not real estate appraisal. But that's only about 2.5 million. And so do we have another appraisal that is more than the 9 million in question? Like a real estate appraisal? Sam, you're right now. Yes, not, well, <laughs> not to throw Mike Jameson under the bus, but he was supposed to send out that appraisal today. The The most recent real estate appraisal for the property is $9.46 million. The purchase price is nine and a quarter. Okay. Uh, also, looking at the um, fiscal analysis, it appears as if we, we uh, committed to between three million and nine million which means that we know we'll pay at least three million, but if the other parties are not able to come up with the rest of the six million, then we may end up with nine million as Metro's liability, is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. We're per we are partnering with um, the American Battlefield Trust, which is a national preservation organization based out of DC. Uh, they're committed to purchasing, or paying for a third of the property, and then we're seeking grant funding from the state that has dedicated funds set aside for battlefield preservation for uh, uh, the second third, and then we're covering the final third of the purchase price. So we're confident we will get the six million, that we would likely be three million and not nine million, or we're still not sure about that? Um, the We should know about the American Battlefield Trust by the end of this calendar year, and we will apply for the state grant funding, which has its own regular cycle. This, uh, I believe that applications are uh, released in August. You apply in October and you find out next March. And so we'll know by next summer what the final amount is. Okay. Um, there's some also, I'm, I'm sorry to okay. keep going. Um, there's some flexibility in their funding as well where they might actually be able to uh, fund more than a third or less than a third. It's just, it's really dependent on what's approved, but we're as confident as we can be in a, in a grant funding process. We've spoken with both parties and, and remain, you know, as confident as anything. And so that brings me to my next question. So if we're not going to know until a year or two or maybe six months, and then the seller is actually not moving in, moving out uh, for the next three years because there's a lease agreement that allows the seller to stay in for three years. So why is the rush to do that now before we know our exact amount of liability? Um, so so uh, the private party um, is free to sell at any time. Um, and so they are willing to sell to Metro now for a price that is less than appraised value, which I would expect to go up in, in a year or two um, as that entire Wedgwood Houston neighborhood has. And so we've gotten an agreement now that works where we have an option for other uh, private parties to come in and help us purchase the pro property. You all have already allocated this money in the last CSP. Um, uh, that was passed in Mar March um, for for this amount, and so. But the uh, three million or the nine million? Uh, three up to nine, yes. Uh, and so uh, we hope we only have to use three. But um, uh, when when you have a transaction that's generally agreed to by all parties, it's it's best to move. And then the the, the last question, and again, um, I support Ford Negley. Uh, I'm not a real estate person. I'm just looking at it from the eye of a layman and just looking at what jumps out at me. And so what is the rationale behind a dollar lease when we're paying nine million out of the 9.4 appraised value? Um, the build, so the green property, uh, the green family is the family that we're acquiring it from. That property is actually quite unique. I'd love for folks to go out and look at it. It's a um, the historic site, um, the building is over 100 years old. Um, it's been used for a variety of purposes. It's actually currently kind of a light industrial site that is used to build um, uh, like sets for from TPAC to community theater to movies. Um, and they have contracts running for the next couple of years. And so we, as a part of the condition to, to sell to Metro, um, we agreed to let them run through their contracts. Our, our chief purpose here in the acquisition is a defensive acquisition. We don't want any commercial uses to encroach on that property uh, or that, um, that site that would encroach on Fort Negley Park. 
Um, and so we're willing to be flexible about when we take over that site uh, to allow them to finish up their contracts with, with those theaters and, and movie studios. Um, but in order to lock the property down today, we had, um, it was a concession that we gave to the seller. Thank you, and I, I, I thank you. That's very interesting because I think what I heard you say is that we don't want something else to happen to the building. We don't want somebody else to buy the building, so we're willing to buy it now and lease it to the person until we figure it out. Good. I'm going to make another plug for the Morris building because that's the thought behind. Let's buy it now before something happens to it. So if we're making that argument in one case, I think it should be applied across board. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Suara. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, and I just wanted to thank Mr. Wilcox and, and to Council Member Suara for the discussion. A couple of just points of context. Um, Mr. Wilcox uh, talked a little bit about the history of the museum or of the building. That building is where the Athena statue from the Parthenon was constructed. If you go in it, it was actually big enough. Um, that's where it was constructed. Um, and so, yes, I, I, I had sat down with the Green family several years prior. They had been expressing interest in saying, hey, we think at some point we're going to want to sell. Um, I'm very much in favor of this acquisition. I think it's a big um, addition to it and will be a big addition to the Fort Negley Park within the master plan. Um, and, uh, and as those who know who've kind of been through the Fort Negley discussion over the last several years, that area too is particularly interesting because on several older maps um, is where the old Catholic cemetery was. And so there is a lot of sensitivity and history there that um, I think would be best handled if it were in Metro's hands. So um, I, I would ask uh, many members to recommend approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Member Sledge. Council Member Allen, you recognize. I didn't even hold up my mic. Um, so I'm, I'm going to follow up on Council Member Swar because I would written down the exact same thing. So my question is, if we end up being able to get this for the three million and we've got nine million in the capital spending plan, can we shift that other six million to the Morris building? And does that need to be added? You would have said something like that. <laughs> so, so this money's already been allocated. So this is uh, it's part in the of the capital last, spending plan. Uh, in the CSP, um, you all allocated 17 and a half million dollars for the implementation of the Fort Negley plan. Two and a half million of that money went to finish off this stone work that's been going on for several years. We allocated three million. We hope it's three million dollars for this acquisition, though it could be up to nine, and the remainder for the implementation of phase one of that plan, which is the goal. And Parks and Tim Nations in the back and can speak more eloquently gotcha. to it. But it's to open up the park from corner to corner to make sure it's accessible and get rid of the parking lots that uh, uh, the old Greer Stadium was at, um, rewild that land into a natural landscape that can be used in as, as an amenity to the neighborhood into Nashville. And so that other six million becomes part of the finish out part? It, it, it would contribute, yeah, that's right. It would contribute to the phase one implementation. Okay, then I would just put in a plug for the amount of money we need for the Mars building in the next CSP. Understood. Seeing no other hands, all in favor? Any opposed? You approve. 12 in favor, zero against. And we are on to the last item. 2023-2017 Withers Road in Hurt approves an agreement between the Metropolitan Government and Tennessee Golf Foundation concerning the renovation of two golf courses in Shelby Park. Mm -hmm. Moved properly. Seconded. Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Yes, thank you very much. I uh, We had a really good uh, discussion in the uh, Parks Board meeting last week in regards to this. Um, first, I think uh, the concern is, is that having minority participation on the advisory committee, and I received a um, letter from the director indicating that they were going to address that um, that within the board, and, I, and I'm sure that they are going to uh, appoint some um, additional names or submit some additional names for consideration. But the concern that I have is that uh, with this agreement is a $2 million contract that I think should have been vetted and gone through a competitive bid process, uh, considering that we do have uh, equal business opportunity uh, legislation that 
uh, insist that we do have minority participation and this actually did not go through and was vetted. So I just wanted there to be some discussion in regards to it because the $2 million uh, is being provided by the mayor's office and without there being any uh, participation or discussion prior to is a uh, bit concerning for me. Anybody from the administration want to take that question? Why they didn't bid it? Is, is the question why we did not go to an RFQ process? Or if you will, send it through an RFQ uh, process because all Metro contracts should. So um, on this particular agreement, uh, this funding, the $2 million is out of the 4% fund that was approved by council this spring. Um, designated for repairs at Shelby Bottoms Park, which um, were damaged in the tornadoes several years ago. Um, this is pretty complex work around the golf course that only a few providers um, really have the skills to, to pull off. Um, and so um, the Tennessee Golf Foundation, which is organizing the work out at Percy Warner Public Golf Course, has performed uh, admirably at that golf course and, uh, and that was all privately funded. They approached the administration and said, um, you know, we would be interested in helping you all fund uh, improvements at Shelby Bottoms Park, um, which has two courses, the Vinnie Links course and the Shelby Bottoms, or the Shelby Park course. Um, so our $2 million is going into that, um, towards that work. They are then going to provide additional funding to do uh, uh, work at the Vinnie Links course, um, as well as some other light infrastructure around the park to improve with irrigation and flooding as well. Um, I think if you took that to a, RFQ, a competitive process that said, you know, we're gonna provide this money, but we're gonna need you to step, come in with some sort of philanthropic dollars. We felt like we had a we had a group that was on the ground willing to go, that could do the work, that was sensitive to Metro's needs, that worked well with parks already. Um, and um, so it was our uh, policy call on to, to move forward with a contract or a participation agreement with uh, the Tennessee Golf Foundation. Um, just for clarification, Metro um, typically goes through an RFQ process for most most contracts, but council can choose to, to accept or approve any contract without a competitive bid process. Yes, more hurt. Well, I just think that since we have the process in place and considering that they are the experts, then they would likely be the ones to get it, but there would be no question about it if there is no process that is uh, executed. So that's my concern. Thank you, Councilmember Hurt. Councilmember Mendez, you're recognized. I, I guess uh, I'm still learning stuff um, when I'm done with the last couple of meetings. Um, I, guess, I don't know who this is for, maybe um, Mr. Arby. Um, is, is there a competitive bid requirement for a participation agreement? That, that strikes me as a new concept to me. Oh, sorry. Ms. Darby, you're right now. Um, usually no, uh, no, for participation agreement, um, they do not go through competitive bids. It's usually, usually when we do a participation agreement, it's for um, uh, a development or something and we're asking them to help out with the road or they want to or uh, this, you know, water improvement, some sort of public um, infrastructure improvement that's associated with that development. And I, I don't know whether this is for you or Mr. Wilcox, but I, I guess, uh, am I understanding right that we're calling in a participation agreement because um, they're putting in some of their own dollars to, to this? I think it's all public money, but they have they have partners that they work with where they can get stuff at cost, and so it's un undoubtedly going to be less expensive to do it this way. We get to, we get a shot at seeing working with them on the plans and specifications and make sure that the prices that were being proposed are fair. But one of the advantages here is that they have architecture partners that they work with on this kind of project, construction people that are willing to do work at reduced costs that we couldn't get. All right, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Mendez. Seeing no other hands, 
All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. 10 in favor, one abstention. And I see no other hands. We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.